Hi, my name is Josh Udell with Linden Black, and today we're going to be going over some of the features and options that the Lincoln MKT has to offer. First, you're going to go over the key. We have the lock, the unlock, the trunk, which you have to push twice to open the trunk, and the alarm button to activate the alarm. These cars are a push to start, which means you step on the brake and push the engine start, and it starts just like that. You can also open the trunk by pushing the button that's located on the left side of the steering wheel right here that will also open and close the trunk we're going to go over some of the options uh, right here on the touch screen if you hit climate you can activate the air conditioner by turning on the ac button you can turn on max ac and it'll activate all these for you or you can manually add the ones you want added the Control for the fans are right here to turn up and down the fans and you can also increase and decrease the volume To make it synchronize all across the board hit this dual button and it'll synchronize the AC for all around To control the AC in the back hit rear and if you give rear control the Passengers in the back seat can now control the air in the back and that is located right here for your clients You also have your cruise control, which is set right here. You turn it on by pushing up, off by pushing down. To set it, you push this button up, and that'll set your cruise control. Here, you can control the volume for your stereo. Uh, you also have the controls down here for your AC if you don't want to use a touch screen. You, these are touch right here, so you can uh, if you touch this, it will turn up the, the fans. If you touch it this way, it will turn down the fans. And lastly, to sync your phone for Bluetooth or a client's phone for Bluetooth, you click on Settings, go to Bluetooth, and click on Add Device. And then you follow the instructions on your phone, and you can sync it up like that. I'm Josh Udell, I'm going to be going over some of the options in the trunk of the GMC Yukon with the remote right here. If you push twice on the left start, you'll pop the glass. That'll open and close this hatch part right here. And if you push two on the right hand side of the remote, it'll pop the trunk. There are automatic doors, so it'll open and close on its own. The seats back here, we can fold these down to give access to more storage room. this rope to pull them up or pull this latch to push them down and then also you can lift the headrest right like so and then also to close this trunk there's also a button right here or you can use the remote just push this button and it'll close on its own all right my name is josh udell we'll be going over some of the options for the gmc yukon this is the remote for it right here it's a little faded but on the left side this is how you lock the vehicle on the right side, this is how you unlock it. Once will unlock the driver's side, twice will unlock the entire car. This, if you push it twice, it'll pop the glass on the hatch. If you push this one twice, it'll open up the door completely. This one still has a physical key, so just turn it in. Turn key operation. You can also pop the trunk by using this button right here. If you push this, it'll pop the trunk. If you push it again, it'll close the trunk. To access the AC, it's manual analog control still. So you push this power button right here. Turn this knob will turn up and down the fans. To get max AC, you activate these two buttons. For defrost, you would turn on that button. And for the rear defrost, you would push that button. Make sure these are turned off for the defrost. For the rear AC, you control the volume of the fan right here. You can change how the fan's blowing with this button and the degree right here. To give the control to the passenger, you push this button right here and they can control it right here. To adjust the temperature for the front, this is the driver's side, this is the passenger side, and to sync it all the way across, there's just that button right there. Cruise control is right here. To turn on cruise control, you push this button right here. To set it, you push this one here. 
to increase it while driving you can push here to decrease it you can push here and I believe that is it for the controls of the GMC Yukon Hi, my name is Josh Udell and we're going to be going over some of the rear options for the Lincoln Navigator to pop its glass there's a button all the way on the right hand side here located between the L and the N if you push that you could pop the glass here to pop the trunk, you could either push the button here on the remote by pushing it twice, it'll also pop the trunk, or there's a button right next to the camera, which will open the trunk. So over here is the glass, here is the actual trunk itself. It's automatic, so it'll lift and lower on its own. The seats, unlike the GMC Yukon, are electric, so by activating them, you can push these two buttons right here, 3L moves the left side, 3R moves the right side. And just to bring them back up, again, you would just push it again, and that'll bring them back up on their own. To close the trunk, you have two options. You can either push the button on the remote, or there's a button right here. <laughs> All right, my name is Josh Udell, and we're gonna be going over some of the options and how to use them for our Lincoln Navigator. First, we're gonna go over the remote, you have this button which will lock the vehicle, this button which will unlock the vehicle, push it once, it'll unlock the driver door only. Push it twice, it'll unlock the rest of the vehicle. This button, if you push it twice, it'll pop the hatch, and the alarm, if you hold it, it'll activate the alarm. The Lincoln Navigator does have a remote start option, so all you have to do is push the lock button once, followed by this button twice. So lock, push, push, the vehicle starts. This can get the climate ready for the inside to cool off the car, but it will not enable the car to drive. So you will still, once you enter the vehicle, have to step on the brake and then push the electric button start to actually start the car. Next, we're gonna go over some of the climate controls. So your climate controls are right here. The fan control is right here to turn up the fans, to turn down the fans. The temperature for the driver's side is on the left-hand side. The temperature for the passenger side is on the right-hand side. This vehicle also has heated and control cooled seats. If they're blue, they're being cooled. If they're red, they're being heated. You can also turn down the intensity. You can also do all this by the touchscreen up here. The AC button is right here. You can give max AC to choose all the options or you can manually select which ones you want to control the temperature you can do the touch buttons here or here the passenger has his own climate the driver can also have his own climate or her climate to synchronize it across the board just hit dual and it'll synchronize it for the rear settings just hit rear and if you hit rear control the passenger in the back cannot control his AC with these buttons here they're self-explanatory and to set up your Bluetooth you would go to settings go to Bluetooth and click add device and then follow the instructions on your phone or iPad or what have you uh, you can also open and close the trunk by this button right here on the dashboard if you push this it'll open and or close the trunk to set your cruise control you turn it on here turn it off here to set it, you push the plus sign, and then while it's set, you can increase or decrease the speed by pushing plus or minus. Hi, I'm Josh Udell for Men in Black Transportation, and today we'll be going over some of the options on how to use them on the Volvo. First, we're gonna start off with the key. You have the lock button here, the unlock, push it once for the driver door, twice to unlock the rest of the vehicle, trunk, you hold that button to pop the trunk and the alarm. You hold that button to set the alarm. This Volvo is set up as a smart key. So you push the brake and turn this knob here. That'll start the vehicle. It has a sunroof up here. It can be controlled by this button here. Push it back to open it, push it forward to close it. The clients in the back can also control it by these buttons right here. They can also control the seat in front of them with this control right here, if there's nobody in front of them. 
All these windows are equipped with a privacy screen that be, can be controlled by the windows key. If they push it up while it's already closed, it'll activate the screen. The AC is all done touch screen, so you can push the home button here if you're not already on the home screen. And then to get to it, you can just tap on these volumes here and you can turn it up or down and to control where the fan is blowing you could touch here and it brings it up you can turn it up or down to give control to the back you go up here and click on a rear climbing and you can give them control by turning this up or down on or off and again you can control it by pushing these buttons their control will be back here just push that button there to turn it off or on and it'll give them control the cruise control is right here. You push this to turn it on, this to set it, and to connect a phone to your device, you will just go to no Bluetooth device, and actually I believe it's yeah here. You click on the phone, obviously, and click add phone. And then that's it for the Volvo. Hi, my name is Josh Udell, and we're going to be going over some of the options that the Sprinter has to offer. This is Sprinter 1, we do have two of them. It's the analog key where it's turned to start. Your AC is located on the center dash. Just turn on these fans to turn it off or on. To get the AC, you turn on the recirc and the AC button. This is your control temperature gauge. This controls if it's your face or your feet or defrost. And this is for the rear AC and then their temperature gauge. This is to lock the vehicle. This is to unlock the vehicle. This button turns on the signal for crossing lanes on, on the freeway. So it'll go off each time you cross the lane without your turn signal. And this will go off if you're getting too close to a vehicle in front of you. And if you push these buttons, you can turn off those sensors. Uh, your cruise control is right here. It's no plated next to your blinkers. To turn it on, you push down and to set it, you push up. And then to increase the speed, you push forward. To decrease the speed, you push back. And then that's it for the Sprinter. Hi, my name is Josh Udell. And then we're going to be going over the Sprinter 2, because we do have two Sprinters. This one's called Sprinter 2. Uh, we're going to go over some of the options and how to use it. Just like Sprinter 1, your AC is right here. You turn it up and down. You have these controls. This is for the front. Uh, AC and recirc. This controls where it's coming out of versus the top versus the bottom. Your temperature gauge is right here. To Bluetooth your phone, uh, looks like we'll have to reset that. Uh, but you would go to home and then click on Bluetooth and follow the instructions on your phone. The cruise control is right here. To turn it on, you will pull it forward. To set it, you would push up. And then to increase or decrease your speed, after the initial up, you push up or down. You have extra controls up here. This is the main power. This turns on this whole board. The ceiling lights, up turns them on, down turns them off. Wall lights, and these all the lights I'm referring to are in the back of the Sprinter. Uh, the floor, the TV doesn't it doesn't have one, so these do not. This doesn't matter. Uh, music lights, these are the lights that kind of flash to the beat of the sound. The color lights, there's an ambient light in the back on the roof. If you turn that on, you can control the color with this switch up here. After you turn this on, you can turn that on. it's on you just can't see it and then for the rear AC to turn it on you would push this button right here you can control the vol the fan speed right here the temperature right here and then you can set it to auto if you push that button this light turns on and you can set the temperature and it'll keep it at that temperature and then if you need heat you would push this button again 
Oh, uh, no, I guess the heat and AC are just automatic. And then that's it for the sprinter. Hi, my name is Josh Udell, and we're going to be going some of the options on how to use them in our 28 passenger bus. First, you just have the turn key. Then the AC, which is right here to turn it on. This is your fan control. Then you have your AC button, your your recirc, and your max AC, which will automatically enable all that. Your temperature dial, the direction of your fans, and then to connect to Bluetooth, you would go to your screen. I'm not sure how well you can see it. You would click on menu. Then you would go to setup. I'm sorry, you would go to menu and then Bluetooth phone, obviously. And then you would go to the gear, which is right here. And then it'll show up on your phone as VR600D and the code will be right here, one, two, three, four. This is your PA system. You push and hold that to speak. This is the volume for the control. Up here is the AC for the back. You push this to turn it on. Your fan speed is right here. Your temperature gauge is right here. And if you want it on auto, you push that to light until it lights up. And it'll auto to whatever temp you have it set to right here. So if we set it to 74, it'll control it and stay in 74. We have your switches right here. This big one with the red outline is for your, the passenger door. Reading lights is to turn on a light in the back. That's bright, but not really that bright. Interior lights, that will light up the whole back. And auxiliary is just a blue ambient light for amb ambiance at at, um, driving at night. And for your cruise control, you have it right here. You have the on and off button right here. You would turn that on. And then to set it, you would push the set button. And then to control speed, you would either hit plus or minus to increase or decrease the speed. These auxiliary switches, uh, they're not connected to anything. You don't need to worry about them. And that would be it for your 28 passenger. Hi, my name is Josh Udell. This is me a quick video on just how to enter our 57 passenger bus. You have a door mechanism right here. All you do is insert the key, unlock it, and then turn that knob and that'll open the door here and that's how you enter the 57 passenger from the outside hi my name is Joshua Udell and this is our 57 passenger bus and I'm gonna be going over some of the options and how to use it what you just saw was the main power for the bus you have to turn that switch on before you can do anything and always make sure to turn it off when you're done with the bus. Without that being off, you can drain some of the power for the bus and you'll have a dead bus. So make sure that switch is off when you leave the bus. When you're entering the bus, we'll turn it to the on position and it'll have a little light to indicate that it's on. You put the key in the ignition, which is located down here. I'm just going to go over some of the options. I'm not going to tell you how to engage the parking and disengage it. You should already know how to do that. Uh, mind the alarm is going to do that until it fills up with air. I'll, I'll help it along. So that alarm will keep going until it hits 60 PSI. That's normal. Don't worry about it. Your cruise control is right here. You flip this switch on, it will light up. You turn it, you set the speed by pushing down. And then once it's on, you can control the speed by pushing up or down. You have your AC right here. Your fan speed, the direction, and the temperature. And you have your recirc button right there. This is to turn on the heat in your mirrors to help them defrost. This is to roll down your window. Believe it or not, the 57 passenger window will roll down if you want it to roll down. The light test will it'll fluctuate through all the lights, turning them off and on, making sure they work. You don't really have to worry about that. These two switches, USB, each seat in the back is equipped with the USB. By turning this on, turns that on. So usually just leave it on. Ex the exterior lights, 
Uh, just as it says, we'll turn on lights that are located on the outside of the bus. You don't want to drive with those on, so make sure they're off while driving. You have your rear AC located right here. To turn it on, you push this button. You have your fan speed right here and your temperature gauge right here. Your reading lights will turn on a light so they have minimal light so they can read or what have they. Interior lights will light up the back of the bus. And auxiliary lights will turn on a blue ambient light for night driving. The TV switch will activate the TVs that are in the back. So if you want to watch a movie, you turn that switch on. The exit fan turns on a fan that's located above the door. It'll turn on when you open the door. And this button obviously opens and closes the door. To hook up Bluetooth, you would go to menu and then go to Bluetooth and then click on the wrench. And then it will show up on your phone as Super 57 and the code is 1233. That code can change, so keep an eye on that code. Uh, this all buses are equipped with a jake brake or engine brake. It's called multiple multiple things. That's located right here. And while you're parked, you can also decrease it, the height of the bus by pushing this switch. It'll lower the bus. But you cannot drive while the bus is down. So please make sure the bus is tightened before you drive or you'll have a really rough ride. This is your PA system. Hold that down to talk and this controls the volume. And that's it for the 57. Hi, my name is Josh Udell and we're going to be going over some of the options on how to use them in our Super Coach. What you just saw was the main power switch for the whole bus. It'll turn, it'll give power and take away power. Make sure you turn that switch on before you start the bus or the bus will not work and make sure the switch is off when you're done with the bus. Please turn the dial to the off position when you're done with the bus, that's important. We're going to go over some of the controls here. You have your AC, this is your fan speed, your direction, the temperature, and the reset button. You have your lock and unlock, your windows, driver and passenger. These switches turn on the USB. All seats in the back are equipped with their own personal USB, so make sure that's on for the passenger. The camera will give the clients access to the camera, your view. So if you want to give them something to watch, you can turn that on. The bathroom switch gives power to the bathroom. These shades will activate the shades located on the bus. There's one up top. And and there's one located all the way in the back. This is your height for the bus while you're parked. If you push this, it'll lower the height of the bus by a few inches. Do not drive while the bus is lowered. It'll be a very rough ride and hard on the suspension. So always raise it if you lower it before you leave. This is your Jake brake or engine brake. It's called, it has a few names. That's where that's located. And your cruise control is right here push it up to activate it to set the speed push down on this switch and then to increase or decrease speed after you can hit that switch up or down this is your PA system just hold that button to talk and the volume control for it is right here your AC for the back is located right here push this button to turn it on this is your fan speed this is your temperature gauge this is the TV switch, so if they want to watch a movie, you have to flip that switch on. This is the door to open and close the door. This is your reading light. This will turn on a light in the back, uh, minimal light so they can read. This will give full light, uh, light up the back like a Christmas tree. And then this is ambient lighting for driving at night. It turns on a very low blue light. And then that's it for the Supercoach.